Yeah, I'm losing my edge. What does the Fed do, Pete? Um, this is something that comes up a couple of times a year when the Fed chairperson makes a statement or we have uh, an FOMC meeting and they move interest rates one way or the other. And I think there's a ton of confusion around what they actually do, like directly do and what indirectly happens from there and what you trade. Because Pete, I don't think the Fed does anything directly that affects traders, right? Because I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I got a couple of bullets here. They set the Fed funds rate. Nobody trades Fed fund futures, so who cares? Um, they buy and sell assets. So I guess you could say they're a participant in uh, some of the actually, assets. They're actually not. And it's a great point. You, but they physically, no, no, they, they, because you're right. They buy and sell assets on behalf of the treasury. No, no, no. I want you to go. I, I'll yeah. leave it at so, that. They don't, so they don't set treasury it, it's rates. It's like, go hey, into. I hand you a paper order. Go buy me 10 bellies. You know, you walk in the pit and buy 10 bellies. They're, you're not buying them for yourself. You're buying them for me. So yes, they, they basically, um, they buy and sell uh, securities on behalf of the, the New York Fed, which actually has, handles market operations for them, um, uh, executes on behalf of them. So you're absolutely right. And this is a great, all they do is set that secured overnight lending rate. So basically if you're Bank of Beverlovia and I'm Bank of Normalcy and you come up short on your reserve requirements, uh, you go to you can go to what they call the Fed window and borrow enough just overnight to cover your reserve requirements. Though you use an insane analogy that almost nobody will understand. That's way too much information for anybody. Basically, that no doesn't sense. mean anything. Yes. But Beverlovia versus normal sea land. I don't understand that. But yeah, no, you you do you did nail it. Uh, crazy uh, analogies aside, all they do, because yeah, I, I guess I, I got even this part wrong here. Um, all they do is set that short, short, short term interest rate there for bank to bank lending. And this is what that interest rate looks like in terms of the Fed funds futures. And it looks like, oh, well, the rate's 100. No, the rate is actually down at 0% because these futures are priced in terms of 100 minus the rate. And so you can see here, all hell breaks loose in financial markets in February and March of 2020. The Fed, what do they do? They bring those short-term rates down to zero, Pete. I think they did it in two fell swoops there. Um, and you see these futures skyrocket to 100 because this is what they control. Um, like Pete laid out there very well, they don't even, when they, they came out yesterday and, and said that uh, they have no interest in raising the Fed funds rate at any point, and they have no interest in stopping the purchase of assets at any point, and they don't even technically uh, buy those assets. So this is what they're talking about, Pete, this low Fed funds rate that's hanging around 0%, and you can see it's a flat line here at 100 for the Fed funds futures, which, like I said, are, are simply 100 minus that 0% rate. But Pete, does that mean low treasury rates? Because this is where the confusion comes in. I'm trading treasuries, right? When I'm trading S10Y, that's the 10-year treasury yield. Right. When I trade the two-year and 30-year that's coming out very soon from the small exchange, those are treasury yields. Now, they're not setting those, those treasury yields, are they? They are not. And they can't. I mean, no one can. It, it, it's interesting. Um, and it, it, this is a great time to talk about that. No, absolutely. That is a market that is is driven by supply and demand. The amount of treasuries that the U.S. government needs to sell to fund its its everyday business of providing all of its services. And the demand for purchasers to have an asset that yields a rate of return. So that rate of return can be whatever the market determines it to be. Now, can they affect that market by buying certain durations within that treasury curve? Sure. Can they do something called yield curve control? The Japanese do this. They set basically, the way the Fed sets overnight rates here, as we talked about, the, the one thing they can set is that overnight, and they don't even pick a number, they pick a little window. So it can vary back and forth, but by a very fractional amount. The Japanese are trying a different approach. They're trying to say, we think overnight should be here, two years should be here, 10 years should be here, and 20-year JGB should be here. Fine, give it a shot. I, you know, usually when the government tries to fix a rate, they tend to lose to the market. And while we all feel very complacent, like, ah, eh, they're going to keep these at zero, the 10 years are going to stay below 1%. You know what? When the beast, 
there is no controlling the beast, the beast being the market. So I'm I think so, the fact of what they can do will be challenged as dynamics within the economy. I'm so change. glad that you brought that up because this is like a different, almost like a different uh, thread in that Main Street versus Wall Street battle. It's almost like Wall Street versus Good like- point. Good Capitol analogy. Hill yeah. or something like that, yeah. because we saw this. I'm glad you brought up Japan and we bring it up because it's a very interesting case study for a number of reasons. If you want to do research on negative interest rates or manipulating currency prices, very interesting case study, because I remember sitting there, Pete, when they were trying to set those JGB levels and, and the, they were trying to set, they came in there and they would buy or sell their currency to try to set a certain uh, currency rate as well. And the funny thing from the Wall Street and Main Street side, I guess, was that everybody would look at that and almost immediately reverse the move because right. they would say like, this is this is what they're trying to do. But at the end of the day, like you said, this yield market, this these treasuries in the US or the Japanese yen, when they were trying to manipulate that currency rate, it's a free market that's going to move back and forth right. regardless of where they want it. So- Keep that in mind for today's conversation as it progresses, because what we saw yesterday is the Fed chairperson Powell come out and say those things. Oh, we're good. we have no interest in raising the short term lending rate there, the Fed funds rate. We have no interest in reducing our purchasing of bond assets and everything else. And so immediately people come in and they kill this 10 year yield. They buy up the treasuries because they're thinking, oh, what this guy is saying here directly translates to the market. And it does to a degree, Pete. But when you're separating the overnight lending rate from 10 years of duration right. in interest rates, you've got totally different beasts, right? And we're seeing the move is almost completely reversed today, isn't it? Absolutely. And that's why we we talk about any type of Fed announcement being an interesting thing to trade around, but not something that's going to tell us what strategy yeah. is going to be based moving forward. And it's just, you know, and you hit on it. It's like, okay, ideally I want to get more money back or at least the money back. If I loaned, again, the Bank of Beverly, $1,000 for 10 years, I would like to at least get the $1,000 back or honestly a little bit more. Well, yeah. the question becomes what, you know what, what is that, that rate. And there's a number of different things that figure into that. But what you have to do is take those variables around inflation, the the currency to a lesser extent, and, and different pieces that you have no way to predict for 10 years. So usually that requires some sort of premium or discount. We have no idea what that's going to be. The market tries to guess basic what's going on today, yep. what that's going to be 10 years in the future. The only thing we know for sure is guys can't guess, guess what tomorrow is going to be let alone what 10 years in the future is going to be. That's why 100%. these are unbounded and untethered. Yeah, absolutely. And now mind, sorry for, it's a little bit uglier graphic than we're used to because I had to create this in, X, in Excel spreadsheets. It wasn't our, our, our normal, beautiful suite of, uh, of graphic generation normally used. So yeah, Pete's scoffing. He, he, <laughs> he hates the way that this looks. But what I thought was interesting, I did some research, Pete, on when the Fed had short-term interest rates around 0%. And 0% in the short-term, Pete, has not meant 0% in the long-term. I'm looking right. at the three-month Treasury bill, which is a good uh, barometer for that Fed funds rate. It's, it's pretty much as short-term as you can get. Mm -hmm. And you can see here, right now we're at 0% in this orange line. And you can see, oh, well, 10 years, this, this interest rate, if if I'm new to interest rates and I hear, you know, Fed funds at 0%, I might think that this white line here, 10 years, should be at 0% right. as well. But this difference is about 100 basis points, one full percentage. What's interesting, though, Pete, is the last time we were at 0% in the wake of the 2008 crash there, we're at 0% for almost a full decade. Look at how much higher 10-year oh. rates were for the, that 0% same environment that we're sitting in right now. And this is what's really intriguing to me, Pete. I've filtered four instances when these short-term lending rates were below 0.1%. Like you said, they don't set the Fed funds rate at a specific percentage. They set a range. And right now, I believe it's about, you know, uh, I think... 12 and a half or 25 basis points between zero and 25 basis right. points there. So I, I filtered on. for those, I filtered for those data points, Pete. And what we saw 
actually in the last couple of decades here is 10 year rates averaging at 2.3% and topping out at almost 4% for 0% yeah. in the short term. Now that uh, that Pete translates to prices of 23 and 39 <laughs> respectively for S10Y. So, you know, while the immediate reaction from the Fed chairperson speech yesterday is downside in yields, look at the fact that when we've had Fed funds uh, interest rates, short term interest rates at zero, we've still had a huge right. range for 10 year rates being higher than where they are now. So, at the end of the day, what does this Fed do? Pete, they set that short-term rate. They come out and they make a lot of speeches and push markets around a lot. But in the long term, they don't touch this 10-year rate. And there is a lot of movement to be had between where this is now, where it could be in the upside or the downside here. It's not a simple short-term rates at zero. 10-year rates must be at zero as well. 